tricky. He's well up against this. Well, at least he's given himself a fighting chance by winning the right to break in the opening rack. Just managed to get through one round on the winner's side. That was against Blaine Barkas of the United States on the opening day by nine racks to six. I spoke to him afterwards. He talked about how strange it had been, but also that he'd enjoyed it greatly. But then he was beaten by his fellow British player, Chris Alexander. Ran him close, though, 9-7. So over to the loser's side, where he's already had two wins against Gianluca Capella of Italy, 9-3. And a good one against Babkin Melkonian of Romania. Still a long, long road, even after this, to get to the single elimination stage at the weekend. Whoever does come through this will still have to win five more matches. Well, this is very adventurous. He's not interested in the push. It's probably a smart move, to be fair. Probably feels like he's a big second favourite in the tactic, so even though it was the wrong shot, maybe it's the right shot for Gary. Yeah, exactly. He's got to make those allowances. He has to do what's right for him. He's very new to the game, just finding his feet in it. This man, the complete opposite. I think it's probably fair to already describe him as one of the best we've ever seen. He recently became the first player ever to get to the World Championship final four times. He's won two of them, lost the other two. Yeah, that alone is a feat within itself. Four finals of the World Nine Ball Championships. Pretty incredible. Oh, he's lost the cue ball here. Where's he going here? Luckily, it stopped short of the top rail. Albin, Albin's going to be feeling it a little bit, though. He knows That Gary's going to be a dangerous potter, and he doesn't know his game at all, so that's always a little bit of a weird feeling. So, like anything, he needs to get off to a good start. Yeah, I think if he does win the first few racks, that'll make him totally relaxed. He'll know he's going to win from there, realistically. <laughs> but, yeah, as you've indicated there, any early lapses that Wilson punishes, and it could get a bit tense for the Austrian. I think you saw with the jump shot that Wilson played. He's really stabbing around in the dark a bit. He won't have had much practice or much exposure to that kind of shot. I think with all these guys, Gary Wilson, Martin Gould, and in particular Judd Trump, who played in the US Open last year, it'll be interesting to see how much more they want to commit themselves. The snooker calendar is so busy these days. An event like this obviously is ideal because the snooker players out of season at the moment. Yeah, I think what you would see is obviously the likes of Judd Trump and the top tier snooker players. I mean, they're not going to bother playing nine ball, are they? Because as you've just said, their calendar is jam packed. But the lower ranked snooker players who maybe feel like coming to the end of their career or they're not quite good enough anymore maybe they'll start to play a bit more nine ball so Alban Ocean taking full advantage of the opportunity that was handed to him by Gary Wilson's jump shot and he leads 1-0 Daniel Massiol has beaten Tobias Bongers of Germany 9-5 that's on the winner's side though so Bongers will still live to fight another day also on the winner's side, Viktor Zulinski leading Karol Skowerski 9-3. Skowerski, of course, the man who sent Alban Ocean to the one last side of the draw. Most of the matches still out there are on the loser's side. And that includes João Grillo against Miguel Silva in an all-Portuguese clash, in which Grillo leads 7-1 at the moment. The winner of that will play the winner of this 
in the next round. Loho Sum, World Masters runner-up, is on the hill, leading Pius Labutus of Lithuania, 8-6. So those are some of the big stories going on around the place at the moment. As always, Albin always breaks like this, sort of on the rail, and some of his hand on the slate. Four ball goes in the pocket, he'll have a shot. That's okay, it's got out of the way. Had some success in the matchroom events already this year. Okay, he didn't win the World Championship, but did get to the final. He's beaten by Shane Van Boning. And he won the Premier League in Milton Keynes, the successor event to the Championship League, which had been played there around about the same time last year, which he also won. Two marathon events. He played 83 matches to win those two league formats in Milton Keynes over the last couple of years. Skylar Woodward takes the first rack over on table two. He's playing the young 14-year-old Riku. What a tournament he's having. What a day he's having. Great comeback earlier against Robbie Capito on one of the main tables and then over to the other one to play two-time Moscone Cup MVP. Whatever happens now, he's never going to forget today. Following on in the great Finnish tradition in the game. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz still battling away on the one loss side. And a real challenge for him against Switzerland's Dimitri Jungo. It's proving close, as you might expect. It's three all at the moment. Needs this to find that rail. Yeah, he's just okay. He's got a bit of an angle there, but he would have been worried. And that could have landed straight. this to keep going again I've said it before this is a lot thinner than that camera tells you he's going to have to travel up and down with the cue ball here yeah nicely done and I think we're going to see the best of Alban Ocean in this match you know because there's not a huge amount of pressure on him. He knows what a massive favourite he is. And the only way he might start to feel it a bit would be, as I say, if Wilson got a couple of racks early on. But the more Ocean starts to pull away, you feel he could just free wheel and run through this match quickly. But we will see. Break and run there, though. Ocean very quickly into a 2-0 lead. Loho Sun battles on. He's just finished it against Pierce Labutus at 8-6. That's on the loser's side. So he still has a chance of getting through. Had a great few weeks low. Obviously, the World Masters run, but he made a bit of an impact at the World Championship as well. Even Coelho of Portugal on the hill against Chris Alexander of Britain, leading 8-7. Kyle Akalu, who was just seen off in that dramatic finish by Skylar Woodward earlier, he's leading JJ Fall 4-2 in the All-South African clash on table 21.
Smooth sailing so far for the two-time world champion as he breaks in rack three. No shot on the one ball. Red three's blocking the pot. So we've got to save for a push out. I don't believe he'll play a push from there though. Usually when you can see the ball, you fancy playing a certain shot. First glance, it looks a little bit awkward though. So he's gonna have to spend a bit of time here and just try and figure this one out. Not many better in this department than Albin. been an ongoing conversation in the snooker world for many years as to who's the best player not to have won a ranking event. Guys like Anthony Hamilton, Ryan Day, Martin Gould, who we saw playing here, were all in that conversation. But they've all since taken care of that by making the breakthrough. So Gary Wilson is one of the prime candidates for that role now. He almost ended that at the British Open in Leicester earlier well, in the season that's just finished. He was beaten in the final by Mark Williams. He's also been in the China Open final. What is Gary's snooker ranking at the moment, Michael? Well, the rankings now change after every tournament, so I couldn't tell you exactly. Roughly. Uh, yeah, I would... I'm going to say somewhere around the mid-20s. He was knocking on the door of top 16. Uh, but after that British Open run, which was at the Morningside Arena, which was venue for the World Cup of Pool a couple of years ago, of course, he uh, sort of fell away, didn't really build on it for the rest of the season. If I said the name of Cobkit Palogen to you, Carl, what would you say? Have you been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Rack your brains. Say it again. Cobkit Palogen. It's a person. Yeah, I managed to get that far. Michael. Yeah. Well, you seem to think it was the name of a some sort of Far Eastern beer for a moment. Well, he was part of the Thailand team. Remember they got to the final of the World Cup of Pool? Some yeah, yeah, back. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it was a bit of a surprise they got to it. He was in the team. But the reason I mention him is because Gary Wilson beat him in the final of the World Under-21 Snooker Championship in 2004 in Ireland. Now, Palogen never made it as a snooker player. But it was a real achievement for Wilson to win that title because the field included players like Judd Trump, Mark Allen, a lot of other really good players who have gone on to make a name for themselves. And at that time... It looked as though Gary Wilson was really well set for a big, big career as one of the top players in snooker. And you see very good amateur snooker players, but they can't cope with the tactical side of the game when they get onto the circuit. But that was the thing. He had a really good all-round game. For whatever reason, it never quite happened for him. He ended up working in a frozen food factory. He ended up being a taxi driver for a while. And then he just decided, right, I've had enough of this. I want to give snooker one last go rededicated himself, got back on the tour, and he's had his best years at a relatively advanced age. Came within one match of getting to the World Championship final three years ago. And here he is now, with a really good chance to take a rack off one of the best pool players in the world. Just to answer your question, he's actually a bit further down the snooker rankings than I thought. He's fallen as low as 33. That's been much higher than that, as I say, he was knocking on the door of the elite top 16 for a while. But there's a little moment for him to remember, whatever happens for the rest of this match. The moment he took a rack off Alban Ocean. Still trails, but it's now 2-1. 
Victor Zielinski is on the hill. 8-4 against Karol Skowerski. Abdul Al Yusuf closing in on progress on the winner's side as well. Leading Britain's Luke Rollison 7-5. And over on the other feature table, Sky Wool Skylar Woodward, 2-0 lead now over Riku Rompainen. And he's got a good chance, actually, to make that 3-0. Ivan Coelho and Chris Alexander have now gone eight each in their match. We were doing Chris Melling's match together earlier, Carl, and you were saying there's just no chance of prospering when you jump between different Q sports. And it's a different scene for Gary Wilson. He's doing this as a bit of an experiment just to see how he gets on. Snooker is still obviously going to be very much the focus for him. But that's the thing. I mean, a lot of the snooker players think they could prosper in the pool world, but they'd have to put in a huge amount of work and almost put snooker on the back burner to make any serious impact, wouldn't they? Yeah, I agree, Michael. But I think because we're using the magic rack and this break format is very easy, they have got a potter's chance. As you said before, when we was doing the, the Chris V Imran match, you've only seen one dry break. That's so where if you look at the other events, the Masters and the World Championships, that was so different, wasn't it? So because everyone's pretty much guaranteed a ball off the break, this is what you see, and he's landed on the one, and obviously he's a great cueist, so this is just, this is just connect the dots, really. You're not seeing a lot of safety play and bank shots and jump shots. It's just literally all break, hope you land on the lowest ball and run out. For a, for a die-hard pool player like Albin or Shane, this is not really what they want to play. They don't want to play it this way. They want it to be a bit difficult. Well, Judd Trump spoke very honestly after he got a heavy beating off Jason Shaw in the US Open and said that he knew he had so much to learn about things like push-outs and bank shots and kick shots and all the rest of it. But when Gary Wilson's in a situation like this, it's just balls in the middle of the table, playing position and potting them. Well, he's going to be as accomplished at that as anyone. And here he is now with a chance to draw level. It'll just be interesting to see how Alban Ocean responds. He knows he's still a massive favourite in this match. Race to nine. Gary Wilson keeping up with him nicely so far. And that's his first break and run of the match. So from 2-0 down, Gary Wilson, the Tyneside Terror, as he's been christened in the pool world. He's got it all the way back to 2-2. Did you play much snooker, Carl? I didn't, actually. When I first started out playing Q Sports, I start, started out playing English 8-ball. I was one of the very few that didn't come from snooker. I never even give it a go, to be honest. Used to play the odd Friday night with my friends down the local snooker hall, and that was about it, really. Ever make any decent breaks at it? My highest break is actually one four five. Right. Okay. Well, there you go then. I mean, you know, you well, play, you, well, you're, you're playing enough, it down, but come on, Carl. Funnily enough, I've had it three times, and on a Thursday night in the winter in Blackpool, we play small table snooker with ten reds. And the balls are a lot smaller. And one night I've walked in and my mate said, oh, should we go on the big table? Which we never do. And we went on the first frame and went up to 145 in. I don't have a clue why or how it just happened. Yeah, so, I mean, a minute ago you were telling us you'd played a few Friday night games with your mates. Now you're telling us you've been within two points of a maximum. Super talented, Michael. Well, what can I say? Yeah, well, you can, you can say that first off instead of trying to hide your light under a bushel. I knew you were lying. I've not had the elusive maximum of Twitch that I've used. Oh, well then, I mean, you know, just as well you never tried your hand. 
Uh, 62 at golf as well. No, that's just a joke, I haven't. 72 is my best. And what about the back nine? <laughs> Now, this is where things are not going to be good for Garrett, and that is a prime example. That is why when a pool player in this event would play a UK eight ball player or a snooker player, they want it to go messy because that is where Gary's going to struggle. And he knows that, of course he does. Just completely misjudged the spin, trying to get the cue ball behind the nine and the eight in that, that kind of path. He's unbelievably hard on himself, Gary Wilson, in uh, a snooker context. And he'll have taken some of that into the pool as well. He's not come here with massive expectations, and he knows in this match nobody's expecting him to win. But he'll want to come away feeling that he's given his very best. Well, at least put it up to Alban Ocean a bit. Every rack he wins will mean a lot to him, believe me. Albin's still got to do a job, though. He knows it can get a little bit scary out there. He's been around the block once or twice on a pool table. So he's got to stay focused and just make sure you don't do anything silly in open play. <coughs> Raced through the first couple of rounds. He only lost one rack in total. 9-0 against Sergio Lagunas of Spain. And then 9-1 against Stephen Coelho of Portugal. And then that surprise, 9-5 defeat to Karol Skowerski of Poland, who's done well in the World Cup and won the World Masters, but both of those things happened a decade ago, so that was a real upset. And just to come back to Ivan Coelho of Portugal, who we mentioned there. I told you he'd gone to a hill hill finish with Chris Alexander on the loser's side. Well, Alexander came through at 9 8. He'll play Ronald Regley for the right to then take on Mika Imminen. Single elimination stage must seem a really long way off, even now, to the players on this side of the draw. Alban Ocean then, back in front. He leads Gary Wilson 3-2. Completely different story on the other feature table. Skylar Woodward, absolutely dominant early on against 14-year-old Riku Rompainen. 5-0 to the American Moscone Cup star. Victor Jelinski still on the hill against Karol Skowerski. He's been made to wait. It's 8-6 there now. And Abdul Al Yusuf, not home yet against Luke Rollison. 7-6 to the World Championship semi-finalist from Kuwait. So if you were advising Gary Wilson now, Carl, if he was gonna enter a few more pool tournaments, what he needs to work on, what he can do to improve his game, what would you be saying to him? I think he would need to find a cue that he's 100% happy with because I'm sure he's not played too much with the cue he's using. I think he only got it last week. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, obviously, it's going to be a lot thicker than his snooker cue because of the sheer ball size of a nine-ball pool ball. So he'd have to find the cue he's comfortable with. And then it would just be a case of banging the hours in you. You soon pick it up, do a lot of drills, practice the break, not so much this break because it is the easiest form of break shot so you can practice all the breaks and 
just play better players, really. You soon learn. He's going to learn a lot from from this week alone. Yeah, and the fact is, he's won three matches here, so he's going to be pleased with his efforts, whatever happens. Alban Ocean, 3-2 up. You can see the difference in the break just there alone. Albin creates a lot more power in his break. And, of course, the match before, there's no better breaker than SVB. He's got the best break on tour. Speaking of breaks, let's just come back to this 145. I mean, were you on for a maximum? No, I wasn't. It was, it was a little bit messy, to be honest, but it was just one of the miracle breaks, to be honest. But was it, did you take a couple of pinks early on or a blue or something? Uh, it was a blue, actually. But after after how many reds are we talking? I think it was halfway through. No, maybe early on, maybe five or six. And the table was, wasn't pretty. It was just one of them crazy things, really. I've, I've had quite a lot of tons when I have played, don't get me wrong, but... A lot of shots around the black area I seem to struggle with. Just probably a little bit like Gary here. You know, it's, it's a different game altogether, isn't it? That was a little wide from Alvin, but it slid in the pocket nonetheless. Imran Majid on the hill now against Scotland's Vincent Bimendi. We saw Majid on the main table earlier against Chris Melling. A match in which both players made... Quite a few mistakes, to say the least of it. Majid 8-3 up there. Tyler Steyer looks like he's been battling away on the loser's side since the dawn of time. He's still going, but he's 3-0 down against Mateusz Sniagotski of Poland. Francisco Sanchez-Ruiz pulling away now against Dimitri Jungo and leading 6-3. And a nice swift rack for Alban Ocean. His second break and run out of the match so far. And he goes too clear once again at 4-2. Kyle Akalu, who uh, was up against Skylar Woodward earlier. Very close finish. He's back on the table for an all-South African clash. against JJ Fall, and he's leading 7-3. Looks increasingly likely that the winner of this will play João Grio. He's leading the all-Portuguese match against Miguel Silva, 7-3. And Luke Rollison, one of the British contingent here, battling back really well against Abdullah Al Yusuf, who got to the semi-finals of the World Championship in Milton Keynes last month. It's now 7-all there. So can Ocean start to pull away? He's restored that two-rack gap at 4-2. It's a good break. Four balls down. This could be a quick one. It's all about the purple five, this rack now. Imran Majid has closed out that match now, so he battles on. Tyler Steyer, though, has fallen 4-0 behind now against Mateusz Sniagotski. You don't remember Thailand getting to the final of the World Cup of Pool? 
just about remember that one, yeah. Yeah, Germany beat them in the final. I think it was Ralph Suke and Torsten Holman. It was in the Philippines, right? Yeah. 11 years ago. Why do I feel like there's a test coming again? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, if I'm going to be asking you any more questions, it's about whether you've almost done a four-minute mile or something like that after the revelations we've had here in the last few minutes. Definitely not. The shot's gone wrong. He's tried to spin round three or four rails and make something happen, and, well, he couldn't have got any worse, could he? Just look at that. A little bit lucky, really. It was actually a good shot. And you would never envision hitting the nine like that and hooking yourself behind the seven. I mean, come on. Chris Mellon had a similar shot to this earlier on against him, and I'm wondering, if, can he go two rails with a bit of check spin and just hit the right-hand side of the five to leave the five dead on the side rail? Also, he could play a DF of some sort, maybe, just to stay alive. He would only do that if he feels like it's a tough hit. Well, he's trying to go side rail, just missed the seven. I wonder if he's going to play this slow, he is. Well, he's played this good. He has played this really good indeed. Can Gary just slide off the edge of this ball? I told you that Britain's Luke Rollison was turning things round against Abdullah Al Yusuf. Well, he's continued to do so. In fact, he's first to the hill. He now leads 8-7. That would be a big story. Riku Rompainen, the 14-year-old who we saw on the main table earlier, has avoided the whitewash against Skylar Woodward. Still a long way back, though. He trails 5-1. And Karol Skowerski, could he be about to claim his second big scalp of the day because he's gone hill-hill with Viktor Zielinski, having earlier seen off Alban Ocean. Albin's just taking a bit of time here because he doesn't want to leave a combo for Gary. Is he going to try and get the cue ball behind the six? That could be tricky because the five might start leaking out. That's what he's tried. Needs this to bounce. Well, what a shot he's played there. Albin Ocean has one of the best cue balls in nine ball pool. And he's certainly showing all respect to Gary Wilson here. I've spoken to Alban in the past about snooker. I'm not sure how much he knows about it, but he's certainly very interested in talking about it. Oh, look at this. Well, not quite to be. If that had dropped, great chance to get back to 4-3 as it is now. You would expect Ocean is going to open a three-rack gap for the first time in the match. Yeah, what a class safety shot that is. That's the best safety shot we've seen on table one so far in the opening three days here at the Copper Box Arena. Joe Grio has won that match now against Miguel Silva, 9-3. So he'll play the winner of this. And that winner looks increasingly likely to be the two-time world champion, Alban Ocean. Four balls down off the break. He couldn't run it out from there. He did end up playing a very good tactical shot. Gary Wilson almost potted his way out of trouble.
but once he'd left the chance, there was never really going to be any other outcome. Ocean now leads 5-2. Kyle Akalu on the hill in the All-South African Clash on table 21. He leads 8-3. On the winner's side, it's one apiece between John Morrow of Canada and another South African, Jason Theron. Just to go back to, uh, we were talking about 145s and maximums and that. Gary Wilson has made four maximum breaks in professional competition. He's one of only 11 players in all of history to have reached that landmark. Underlining what a capable player he is. He'd be the first to acknowledge he's not lived up to his potential in snooker. It's not been through lack of dedication or desire, I don't think. Maybe he's wanted it too much at times. There you could see the power. He actually hit a little bit too high on cue ball you could see it spinning forward but a ball has kept it around the center of the table Riku Rompainen the 14 year old was 5-0 down to Skylar Woodward on the other featured table but I told you he had won the sixth rack and uh, he's just a few relatively straightforward pots away from winning the seventh as well you can see that on Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Abdullah Al Youssef has just scratched with four balls left on the table. Luke Rowlandson has a chance to beat Abdullah. Yeah, it looks fairly straightforward from where he is. Well, Yusuf went back to his chair with all the look of a man who doesn't expect to be getting out of it again until it's time to shake hands. And what a strong finish to the match for Rollison. Well, Yusuf was looking fairly comfortable there. Yeah, that's over now. Luke Rollison has beaten Abdullah Al Yusuf 9 7. And while Al Yusuf heads to the one loss side, Luke Rollison heads through to play Joshua Filler. Yeah, Great. the sport of Abdullah there. I was watching, he was clapping, and he patted Luke on the back. Absolute gentleman, Abdullah Al Yusuf. I spoke to him briefly at the World Championship, and that much came across. A little bit of a tester for Alban Ocean here. But you would have backed him all day long to get it, and he has. Ocean now four clear at 6-2. That's the great thing about this UK Open, isn't it? With this format we're seeing now, Rollison getting through. He's had a great win, and his reward is to face one of the biggest names in the game, former world champion. World Masters winner just a couple of weeks ago. And of course, the man who clinched the winning point in the Moscone Cup just before Christmas at Alexandra Palace. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz has beaten Dimitri Youngo. It's a good win. Youngo, obviously, a very useful player, as we know. He's shown some good form recently. But it was level early on. Oh, very neck and neck. But Sanchez Ruiz has put on a real spurt. He's had one or two close run things in this championship, but that in the end was not one of them. So he battles on on the loser's side. Well, but Ocean finds himself there. But at least it looks as though he's going to make a winning start on the one lost side of the draw. He needs three more. Yeah, again, a great break off there. 
Cue ball did park, but he got kicked. Karol Skowerski has pulled it off. He's beaten Viktor Zielinski. What a day it's been for him. Beat Albin Ocean earlier. And on the loser's side, Kyle Akalu has now beaten JJ Fall 9-3. Tricky shot here for Albin. I think he can chop it in the side pocket. Yeah, he can. But he's got to get the cue ball round the table for the red three, which he's going to prove. It's going to prove difficult. That. Got to tell you, it's not going to get any easier for Skowerski. He's probably going to play Skylar Woodward in the next round. Having said that, Riku Rompainen has pulled another one back there now. So it's five three, and of course we saw him. With a great comeback earlier against Capito, so that's not right off the young man just yet. The only other match still out there on the winner's side is that one between John Mora and Jason Theron. Early stages there, Mora 2-1 in front. This is a beautiful shot again. He would have known the cue ball was going to go, go close to the seven ball. But he had to keep the cue ball on that side of the table near the rail. Just look how close that went to the seven. He had to keep the cue ball there, so he had a shot on this red three. Great shot. Oscar Dominguez looks like he's going to live to fight another day in this championship. He leads Jeff Beckley 8-3. It's going to be a long day tomorrow for the players. Still going on the loser side. Be a lot of pool to play. Eight players will come straight through from the winner's side and then the other eight from the one-loss part of the draw. And then we'll have 16 players left going into Saturday. Last 16 and quarter-finals that day and then semi-finals and final on Sunday. We'll be going up to race to 11 once we get to Saturday and then race to 13 for the final. Still race to nine at this stage, though. And Alban Ocean is just two away from that target now. It's his third break and run in the last four racks. And overall, he's now won five in a row. Alban Ocean closing in on victory. He leads Gary Wilson 7-2. I think Riku Rompainen's got another one back, Carl, has he? Well, he's at the table break in my <laughs> yeah. So the evidence is pretty strong that he has. So that's 5-4 from 5-0 down. Incredible story, really. Just 14 years of age. You were probably only making 1-4-4s four snooker and other things at that age. Well, thinking about it, I don't even think I'd started playing Q-sports mm. at 14. If I had, I was late 14 year old anyway, so. He's here, beating the best players in the world. Now, we've got to correct that. Uh, it's 5 3. So they hadn't actually played another rack in between. But he was 5 1 down. Right? He was 5 0 down, oh, yeah. 5 0 yeah. down. So yeah. he's won the last three. So he's back in that match, the young kid. Loho Sum, straight back out there to play Dennis Graber, the ever-improving Estonian player. That one's won all. Tyler Steyer battling back well after a bad start against Mateusz Sniagotski. He's close to 4-3. Mark Beisterbosch really had to pull one out earlier to stay in it. 
Got through in a hill hill finish. He's 3 2 down against Roman Hebler. He'll be playing for the Czech Republic in the World Cup in a few weeks' time. Would have meant so much to Alban Ocean to successfully defend the world title, which no one's done for over 30 years. And of course, he would have equaled the all time record of winning it three times in total. He's such an ambitious player, such a perfectionist, but you know him pretty well, Carl. Do you think he'll just have shrugged that off now and moved on? Yeah, 100%. I think overall, if you're chasing your first win and, and you lose, it's probably harder to take, but when you've got the titles that Albin has won, maybe it's a little easier to take. It's not always going to go your way, the game of pool, so you've got to be thankful for your wins as well. And there was a real stubborn determination about Shane Van Boning in that final, wasn't there? Having lost in the world final twice before, having never won it, he just sensed once he got anywhere near the winning line, he was just not letting that go under any circumstances. Said it was the best day of his life. Yeah, what a world championships it really was for him. It was, it was kind of all set in stone, wasn't it? It was a fairy tale ending. And of course, he had that amazing comeback where he was 10 3 down. And then if you look at the plays he beat, a lot of the times you could win a World Championships and kind of maybe play two or three world-class oppositions and you can get a little easier route to maybe the last 32 or last 16, but he did it the hard way, he really did. Over on table two, it's another rack for the young kid. He's on a straight nine ball and it's there, the comeback is on. 5-0 down to Skylar Woodward. It's now back to 5-4, and Woodward actually taking the unusual step of getting out of his chair to pick the balls out of the pockets. You often see the player who's just won the rack doing that, but for someone to actually come over to the table out of their chair, a little bit of a sign of anxiety, perhaps. But he looks completely unfazed by everything, Ron Payne, and you almost feel you could stick him in the final, and he wouldn't be in the least bit affected by the enormity of it all. Yeah, we have the pleasure of watching both TV screens and I'm watching more of that match than this match, Michael. <laughs> I'm enthralled by the young kid. To think in six years' time, he'd, he'd only be 20. Probably have a couple of world titles by then. This man... Has already done that. 31 year old from Klagenfurt in Austria, Alban Ocean. And he's just reducing Gary Wilson to being primarily a spectator at the moment. I think this is how we expected it might go once Ocean got a bit of a lead. He just go into absolute control mode, and he's now on the hill against Gary Wilson at 8-2. Thomas Kaplan of Poland on the loser side, 7-1 up against Juan Carlos Exposito, who might not win the tournament, but will probably win the prize for the best name of any player in the field this week. Kyle Akalu, having just won that all South African clash, is straight back out there to play Robbie Capito, who of course was beaten earlier by Riku Rompainen. Yeah, this is what happens when you go over to that left side of the draw. It's going to be game after game after game. So important to stay on the winner's bracket. Gives you more time off. Well, that's the thing. People say, oh, there's less pressure when you're still on the winner's side because you've got another chance anyway, but... Once you go over there, particularly if you go over there early on, it's such a slog. Alban Ocean then looking for one more rack. Is he going to get a shot on the lowest ball? What's he going to be faced with? 
Are we going to see Gary Wilson get back to the table? I believe we might just do that, Michael. Going to keep a close eye on the match between John Mora and Jason Throm because that is, of course, on the winner's side. Mora just starting to build a bit of a lead now. 3-1 in front. I was just glancing at table two then, and Riku just fired a long banking as if it was over the pocket. He's fearless, the young man, fearless. I'll be trying to get the cue ball in behind the eight, and as always, he achieves that feat. Well, fair play to Gary Wilson, you know, for giving this a go, even though the adventure is probably going to end in the next few minutes. There's no question snooker is by far and away the dominant cue sport in the UK at the moment. But in terms of giving it more publicity in this country, seeing very well recognised snooker players like Gary Wilson and Martin Gould getting involved and giving it a go can only help. And that looks all right. Rico's just played another wonderful shot over on table two. Listen, would your microphone stretch to the other side of the arena? Because you might as well go over and sit at that table. <laughs> yeah, I do apologise. I know we're watching table one, but I'm just getting a little bit excited. Yeah, no, it's good to keep an eye on that because that is the big story going on out there at the moment. I think we know which way this match is going. Safety shot's gone wrong from Alvin. Can Gary, well, can he produce one of the greatest comebacks we've ever seen? Well, Riku Rompainen has just potted a really difficult six and come round the table and finished absolutely plumb on the nine. Well, we know he's only a kid. But at the moment, he's the comeback kid. That's why he's still in the winner's side after that great fight back he produced earlier. He's pulling out another one here. He's back to five all against Skylar Woodward. Yeah, you can just see the... Gary's missed the two ball. Now, what's he left Albin? Can Albin see the potting angle? Looks to be pretty tight, doesn't it? Well, if he can see it and he can get round for the three, then that miss on the two is almost certainly going to be Gary Wilson's last shot in the inaugural UK Open. Thomas Kaplan on the hill now. 8-1 up against Juan Carlos Exposito. Kind of sad if I don't get to say that name again over the next few days. Riku Rompain and a scratched from the break in rack 11. Meanwhile, back here, Alban Ocean, one way or another, has done just what we said he needed to do. So this looks like the end of the road. Yeah, he played a good shot there, didn't he? He couldn't 100% guarantee where the cue ball was going to finish. But what he did do is made sure he popped the two and 
drew the cue ball back off the nine and this match looks like it's over. It looks like we've seen the end of Gary Wilson. I know Gary well enough to know he'll be sick about missing that too, you know, because he would have loved to have just won another rack before the end. So just one good shot here for Albin. Let's get on the eight ball. And you're still in the event. Yeah, that's enough. This match is over, folks. Yeah, don't forget, when Albin Ocean won the World Championship for the second time last year, had to go to the loser's side after his defeat to Roberto Gomez. But he was the last man standing in Milton Keynes, beat Omar Al Shaheen in the final. And he's still standing here. Seven racks in a row then for Elban Ocean, pulling away from 2-2. Gary Wilson bids farewell to the UK Open. Not sure exactly what he's doing with Elban Ocean's cue, which seems to be quite a way for the adventure to end. But well done to Gary Wilson for winning the few matches that he did. He bows out with a 9-2 defeat against the two-time world champion Alban Ocean from Austria. So it's the end of Gary Wilson's involvement in this event. But don't let it be the end of your involvement in watching today's play because you can get over to the Matchroom Pool YouTube